Hi everyone, let's go over my preferred and alternative medium time frame, low time frame and micro Elliott wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Starting with the medium time frame alternative bullish scenario where we're looking at a three wave finish structure of an ABC which is a 535 move bouncing in the most common target area for a wave C which is between the 1 and the 1.236 trend based FIB extension taken from the high to the low of A to the high of B for then now a continuation to the upside in an impulsive structure. There's three reasons why for me this feels like an alternative. The first one is that this wave C is relatively short compared to a wave A. Now, this is a FIP time that you see on the chart, a vertical line taken from the high to the low of A to the high of B. And usually a wave C takes more time to form than a wave A. But in this scenario, this wave C is about 62% of the time it took to develop wave A. It is possible for a wave C to end between the 0.618 and the 1.618, but preferably you will see a wave C ending behind the 1 to 1, meaning that it's a little bit longer than a wave A, and that is not the case in this scenario. Secondly, and for me one of the more important ones, is that the bounce over here that we had didn't really have strong support. I didn't have any target box as well over here, and I do like my target boxes. The only thing we identified at that moment in time was over here support resistance flip. So we had resistance here turning into support for then this bounce towards the upside. But I would prefer to see price move to an area where I do have a little bit stronger support. And one of those areas is just below price at the moment between 24.8k and 24.3k. And lastly, the wave one to the upside, this move over here counts a lot better as a three wave structure than a nice five wave structure. But we'll go into more detail detail in the lower time frames. If we then go to my preferred scenario on the medium time frame, I'm still looking for a move towards the downside. So in this scenario, this is still an ABC, but this is then a wave W. So it's only the beginning of a bigger corrective structure and then a W, X, and then eventually another move to the downside in a wave Y, which then is a three wave structure to the downside. If we then look at this wave X over here, price just wicked uh, one of the areas that we were looking for, which was the highs over here at 28.3K. Important area also in confluence with the 0.5 Fibonacci taken from the high over here to the low of W. So that is very nice. And also on the micro lower time frames, this works very nicely where this could be the high of X. My maximum target for a wave X would be the target box that is just above wave X over here between 28.9K and 29.2K. But I think preferably I would like this actually to be the high of wave X and seeing a continuation to the downside right now after taking the liquidity over here, which was one of the important areas that we have been looking for. After which we then look for a move to the downside where we do have a double bottom over here at 28 point or 25.8k so that is a very interesting area also in confluence with the 0 0.618 and the 0 0.618 is a common target for a wave y taken from the high to the low of w to the high of wave x so that is definitely a level to look for at 25.6k and if we look towards the downside you can see the 1 and the 1.236, which also for wave Y is a common target. However, these are in between my two target boxes. So that's not too great. So I, you know, if price is going to go below the 0 0.618, first level to look for is the yellow target box as mentioned earlier. But the second one is a lower blue target box between 22.6K and 21.8K as also the maximum target for wave Y is the 1.618. And the 1.618, as you can see, is below the blue target box. So the blue target box is still part of the potential target area for a wave Y. If we then go to my alternative scenario on the lower time frames, which is then the bullish scenario, we are looking then as mentioned for an impulsive structure to the up upside. And also on the lower time frames, it's not looking too great for this particular scenario. First, as mentioned, this wave one is very difficult to count as a nice five wave structure. And just by looking at this structure, it feels more three wavy than five wavy. Right now, I did do a low time frame count on this structure and you can count a five wave move here, but it is not nice and clean at all. It counts much better as a three wave structure. However, in this scenario, this is a wave one, followed then by a long corrective sideways structure in a wave two, retracing to the 886. The 886 is a rare target for a wave two. It is common for a wave B or a wave X, but it is rare for a wave two. So that is also not really supportive of eventually a bigger wave three to the upside. And if we then also look at the volume, then what you now want to see 
is while price is moving to the upside in a bigger wave three, because that is what we're looking for, you really want to see volume pick up as well, the average amount of volume. And we do have some spikes of volume and here, you see volume like increasing a little bit, but the average amount of volume in the price action over here is not higher than throughout the corrective structure of this wave two, which is not something you like to see. You want to see the volume increasing on an average, right? So the volume is not really supporting a bigger wave three at the moment. If we then do look at a potential target for a wave three, which is a minimum level you want to see wave three hit, it's a 1.618 at 28.9K. So if price is gonna move to the upside, we are also still keeping in the back of our minds the bearish scenario where wave X can move towards this blue target box for then a move to the downside. However, in the bullish scenario, the 1.618 is a minimum target as well. If we then go to my preferred scenario on the low time frame, then we'd be looking at a three-wave structure in a wave W, followed by a three-wave structure in a wave X, and then another three-wave structure in a wave Y, where the most common target area for wave Y is between the 1 and the 1.236, taken from the low to the high of W to the low of wave X, where we do have a little bit of a wick above the target area, but that is no problem at all, as we were looking for this area over here, taking the liquidity for then potentially that move towards the downside. You also see a potential trading setup over here and it is important to always follow your own plan and your own strategy. Besides that, there's no financial advice, but look for proof of resistance. What is your proof of resistance? What, is, what gives you confidence to enter the trade, right? Is that a change of market structure? Is that some bearish divergences on some of your indicators? Whatever it is to make you feel confident to potentially enter a short. So this is a potential scenario based on Elliott Waves. We already, already had actually a little... Uh, trade scenario over here which is a swing failure pattern where price wicked above the highs which is the white line right the key line at 28.3k wicking above closing uh, below which is a swing failure pattern entry over here stop loss above the high and then looking for downside most likely stop loss break even by now no financial advice but that's personally what i would do in this scenario uh, but that was middle in the night for me so yeah this is an interesting area for potentially the high of then this wave Y for then a bigger continuation to the downside as mentioned as this then also is the high of the wave X looking then for eventually a three wave structure to the downside in a wave Y. If we do look towards the upside in case price might find some more upside we still again have that target box to potentially look at for that then being the high of a wave Y but this this looks nice like the, the, the 1 to the 1.236 is the most common target and a 1.618 is a rare target for a wave Y, still a target, but it is rare, which is positioned inside that target box. Then we go to the micro time frames, which again, we start with the alternative bullish scenario over here, because also this move towards the upside is actually very difficult to count in a bullish scenario, like in a 1-2 scenario, an impulsive scenario. So what you're looking at over here, is a one two one two one two for then you want to see a bigger three to the upside like a big push to the upside the fact that we've been ranging over here or actually moving to the downside now is almost like invalidating this scenario uh, but still we have to talk about the bullish scenario over here where this is then a potential one two one two one two scenario but you can see the trend lines are diverging and they are not converging which is something that you prefer to see it's much more common in a one two one two one two scenario that you have a structure like this where eventually the trend lines are converging instead of diverging so that's not really something you like to see secondly if we look at the wave two over here so you have what the, the green count is the highest degree count then the blue count uh, is a lower degree and the white count is the lowest degree count because in the end what we're looking for is in green a one two and then a bigger three and then inside the green three we're looking for a five wave structure in the blue count so a one two and then a bigger three four five count which is then finishing the green three but inside the blue three you're then looking as well for the white count so a one two three four five inside the bigger blue three so you can see that each color is a lower degree big smaller smallest however that also means that most commonly the smaller degrees also have smaller structures so you want to see the green wave one to be the biggest followed by the biggest corrective structure in the green wave two but as you can see this wave two already is longer in time compared to the green wave two so the blue two longer than green and the y two 
is longer <laughs> than the Bluetooth. So that doesn't really match nicely. Now one could argue that, hey, this maybe is a whole wave one followed by a wave two. But then the problem is that this wave two over here didn't retrace to the 3A2, which is a minimum target and a rare target as well for the 3A2. So this retracement is too shallow for a wave two as well. And same if you would put a wave one here and then a two and then another one, two, then the retracement of this wave two over here is too shallow again price is not hitting the 0.3A2 Fibonacci taken then from the low to the high of one and the 3A2 is already a rare target so that's not something you like to see if you go to my preferred scenario we're still looking at that WXY scenario where we've basically been looking at a three-wave structure in this wave W followed then by a three-wave sideways structure in a wave X, and then eventually looking for a move to the upside in a zigzag 535 structure, where a rare target for wave Y is the 1.618 taken from the low to the high of W to the low of X, and the gray 1.618 that you see over here is a rare target for a zigzag, which is a 535 taken from the low to the high of then A to the low of wave B for then the high of this potential wave Y over here. And as you can see, these fibs have been very nicely respected indeed for then looking for a move towards the downside. And that brings us back, of course, to that uh, potential scenario where you first want to see proof of resistance. You know, you want to see something that follows your plan, follows your strategy. You need to have some entry requirements to tick off all the boxes of what you want to see. And only when you tick off all those boxes, that is when you then enter a potential short uh, scenario, right? We're disciplined traders. We don't FOMO and we don't YOLO on this channel. So in this scenario, we are now looking for then a move to the upside. Of course, that goes in waves. So it can do, go like this. And we also have a target box just above price, a little bit of good resistance between 28K and 28.2K. So that is an area to potentially look for. And we have to wait and see what price does locally. If we do look at the CVD though, we can see, uh, first of all, that yesterday we had some bearish divergences over here. So lower highs were made, but higher highs on the CVD. So we had some bearish divergences going on, but these already played out as price then moved to the downside. So that's all good, all fine. If we then look more locally, what I think I would prefer to see on the bearish CVD uh, chart over here, which you can find in my uh, Discord, as well as the video at the end screen, we uh, prefer make a lower high on price and then a higher high on the yellow CVD over here, which we didn't do just yet. So lower high on price, higher high on the CVD line. But as you can see, even this high over here on the CVD is still lower than the highs that we made over here for this high. So preferably lower high on price, higher on CVD. And that's kind of what I tried drawing over here that if price would continue to move to the upside, maybe inside the target area over here, it could potentially create bearish CVD as price is then moving to the upside. Likely the CVD will follow price to the upside. And then we could make a lower high on price, but then the yellow CVD line might actually go above the yellow line over here, which then creates a bearish CVD divergence, which could be interesting for then a potential scenario to the downside. So this area is definitely an area of interest between 28K and 28.2K. Uh, so I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational update I've done about the best trading indicator that you can use, in my opinion, which is the CVD, as I've just shown you. Thanks for watching and subscribing, and I will see you at the next one. Bye-bye.